All right, so we are going to talk about how we are going to prep uh, copper tubing to be joined together um, with by either soldering or brazing. And so here I have two pieces of copper tubing that need to be joined together to make one continuous length. And one thing we could do to make this happen is we could go get a coupling and a coupling would slide over this copper tubing. And then uh, if we put a coupling on this, we would have two joints or both ends of the coupling to solder. Instead of using a coupling um, with this soft annealed copper, we're going to use a method called uh, swedging, which is actually going to expand this copper out so that the same size copper can slip inside. Now, one of the easiest ways to do it is to use a flare block. And this is quarter inch copper. So I'm going to put this quarter inch copper into my flare block. And I'm going to stick it through the height of the flare here, or the, the metal here. So it's sticking through the same height as the diameter of the tubing. So I've got that in there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tighten the wing nut closer to the copper first. Then tighten the one further away so I get better leverage. So that my block gets a good hold on it. Now once it's in there, I'm going to use my deburring tool and I'm going to deburr this or ream it and we want to try to keep those shavings from going down in. Now I'm going to use this yoke here and I need to replace the, the tip of it so you can unscrew and take your uh, flaring tip off and get the appropriately sized swedging tip and I know this is the right size because it just barely slips in and um, doesn't go in. So we're actually going to use that yoke to push this in. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten it on the yoke. Now I probably need to loosen the yoke up just a little bit so that it can lock on there. And then go ahead and tighten it down. And as it's tightened down, it's expanding that metal out as it goes. So I've got it expanded all the way out. I'm going to go ahead and loosen it off there. And now you can see a piece of tubing can slide right in it. So now I can join those two pieces together and only have to make one connection. Another way that you can do this is again with a spin tool. And these spin tools are different than the um, flaring spin tool. They have a slightly different shape to them. So, so here is the difference in shape right here. So, the one with the F on it is for flaring the one on with the S on it is for swedging. So they're a slightly different shape and we're going to be doing swedging here. So I'm going to get this set up in the drill. Make sure I put these back in the right spots. So tighten it in the chuck. And then um, I'm going to again use my yoke just to hold on to this copper because it's so small and it does get very hot when you're doing this. So you want to want to have something that will hold on to it. And then I'm just going to get it spinning and I'm going to push it in. So get it spinning and like so. And now fits right inside there.
Now that is a little quicker, however it's not quite as precise and it does create a lot of heat. So one of the benefits is you can do this to um, hard copper. So here I have a piece of hard copper, um, rigid copper, and I'm going to go ahead and tighten it into the vise here. And this is going to be 5 eighths. So I'll change my bit. And hold on to this. And right there. And again, the benefit being this heats it, so it actually anneals it and allows you to do it to hard copper without um, potentially splitting it. So, and then another piece of this would fit right inside. So that's swedging. Um, that will help us again. We can make a joint. It's a nice way if you don't have a coupling available or if you do have a coupling available, but you don't want to have to do two joints, you can do the swedging method and only have to do one joint.